Hi guys, um, this is going to be a little bit different, I'm actually showing you my face. Uh, reason how is because I got a new GoPro and it has the forward little screen thingamajigger that I can actually like, see what I'm videoing. So I'm going to do my best to walk, talk, show you my face, whole nine yards, get used to this. Uh, yeah, this will be fun. Uh, so if you haven't figured out by the intro, we are here at um, Cooper's Rock. Uh, state forest slash state park. I think they call it both. Uh, the reason why we're here is because um, the last video I posted for uh, 2021, yeah, 2021, uh, was a video um, about Cooper's Rock State Park. Uh, me and my little brother, we uh, it's a little family tradition that we go to Cooper's Rock on Christmas or Christmas Eve, I should say. And so every Christmas Eve, uh, we try to, um, make sure I get a camera there. Yeah, every Christmas Eve, we try to go to Cooper's Rock. Well, we did. Uh, it wasn't that attractive though. There wasn't that much greenery. Everything looked dull, boring, and blish. So, posted the video, initially did well but it only has 20 views so i figured i'd better come back to cooper's rock when it's green and show you guys a little bit more of the greenery and the more beautiful side of cooper's rock to be honest so right now i'll flip my lovely camera around i'm on the rhododendron trail i'm going to either go hit the ridge trail and then connect to Mont Chateau or I might just go down the Mont Chateau. Uh, the main objective for today's little adventure, we've already visited the rock, Mr. Cooper's Rock, uh, but we're going to try to make it down to, I believe it's called the Cheat River, down at the base of the park. And it's a heck of a descent and an ascent. Uh, me and my little brother did it uh, the first time we ever um, came to Cooper's Rock on Christmas Eve. What's crazy about that is when we came that first time, um, there was still snow on the ground. And so that Mont Chateau down to the Cheat River, it was still snowy. And so it made everything a little more treacherous. I do not know if I have the pictures for that. Uh, Adventure's still on my phone, but I'll add them if I find them. So, yeah. Um, objective one was to make a uh, better Cooper's Rock uh, State Park, State Forest video that you guys hopefully would like better. Uh, I've already come across three deer, including a mama and a, a baby but I did not get video of them. But yeah, I'm just, I would like to get to a section of the trails where you can see all the ferns because one thing about the forest here at uh, Cooper's Rock is the fact that they have a lot of ferns. A lot of ferns. Oh, that's a bird. Hey guys, so, remember I told you there were a whole bunch of ferns? Here are those ferns I was telling you about. This is just a small little section of it. But, whole sections of the forest floor are just covered with ferns. And the, the reason why this is interesting is because if you have things like ferns growing in your undergrowth of forests, that means there's still light coming through. Now, if there's any foresters out there listening to me, they, they can correct me. But the way I was explained to it was, 
if there are ferns and a lot of undergrowth growing in a forest that is because the forest is not mature which means the trees canopies aren't spread out enough to completely block or block at least 90 percent of uh, the sunlight out and so because they're not mature enough the trees the forest all that stuff put together because they're not mature enough uh, you're gonna have light that seeps through and you're gonna have a bunch of undergrowth and especially here at uh, um, Cooper's Rock you're going to have ferns is that the only undergrowth no is it the majority yeah so let's continue onward I think we're gonna hit the Henry Clay furnace next I believe I got my map right uh, Cooper's Rock State Park if you're listening you need to update your map it's not that good that's my only complaint okay let's go hi guys there it is that is the Henry Clay furnace Right. It's like a decent sized uh, structure. Um, let's see. Yeah, you can like get up close. I look, there might be a bear in there. Yeah, you can look up into it. I'm not sure how much you guys can see of that. Well, you can look up into that. Yeah, that's decent sized. Let's see if we can better look at it. Yeah, I stand your clay for furnace. Okay. Let's go down and see if there's a little information on it for you. And then we're gonna try to go back and get down to the Cheat River. Um let's see. Here's a sign. Let's see. Uh, basically, the furnaces were built near resources that were needed to uh, produce iron, trees, iron ore, limestone, water. Uh, they say that this furnace was initially, was, uh, was literally a hotbed of activity, operated about 24 hours a day. Uh, let's see. Uh, its main use was operated during the early 1800s, but then up then by around uh, 1849, the need for uh, the furnaces had decreased enough to where they could actually shut it down. But yeah, there's your Henry Clay furnace. Back on a merry way. I'm hearing voices, so maybe there's somebody out on the trail with us finally. Who knows? Okay, let's try to get down the Cheat River. Yeah. And uh, then 